today, I wanna share an exact roadmap of what I would do if I was starting over and I wanted to reach that $10,000 per month mark. Making $10,000 every single month will change your life and it's not as hard to get there as you might think. In the last five years, I've grown three businesses past the $10,000 per month mark and today I have a rental portfolio of nine units, a YouTube agency that brings in over 20K each month with just a few hours of work each week from me and I have this YouTube channel that has multiple revenue streams attached to every single video. I have a video coming soon that is over an hour long, breaking down everything that I've done to get here and reach the first two levels of financial freedom as well as my plan to reach the third and final level so be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you don't miss that video for most people ten thousand dollars per month gets you to level one financial freedom and if that's not awesome enough a side benefit is that the work you have to do to reach ten thousand dollars per month while it's not that hard it does turn you into a different type of person that you're going to need to be to take it even further and reach level two financial freedom and even level three generational wealth so how does this work the reason that $10,000 is enough for most people to reach level one is because level one financial freedom is defined as when your self-directed income is more than your burn rate. The first phrase to take note of is this burn rate, and this is going to be per month. When I first decided to really pursue financial freedom, I was working at a basketball camp and one of the dads of one of the kids happened to be a real estate investing millionaire. I've told this story on the channel before, but I got the chance to buy him lunch and sit down with him for an entire afternoon. And he gave me the blueprint that he followed to reach financial freedom. And one of the first things he told me was to never again think of my finances in a yearly sense. That's too long of a time period to notice trends and to make changes. Instead, think of every number on a monthly basis. So burn rate, how much are you spending each month your mortgage your car note gas food health insurance clothes streaming services whatever it is to fund your lifestyle this is your burn rate and whenever your income passes this level that means that you are cash flow positive you are making more money than you are spending each month we'll come back to how you get this income to be self-directed in a moment but it's actually the step right before you start playing the financial freedom game most people are cash flow positive with income that comes from being an employee. So you make enough money from your job each month and you use that to cover your burn rate. There's absolutely nothing wrong with playing the employee game. In fact, if you can't be cash flow positive here while playing this game, then you have to solve that problem first before you try to jump into playing the financial freedom game. Beneath the video, I'll put some links to some free tracking apps that will help you see how much money you're making versus how much money you're burning. And I'll make another video on that soon. But once you can be cash flow positive with your current income, that's when you can start to think about becoming an entrepreneur and playing the financial freedom game. And this is where the self-directed part comes into play. Self-directed means you have a way of making money that gives you both time and location freedom. So you're not tied to a desk or having to clock in at a specific time schedule. For most people, your job won't have that much flexibility, so self-directed income usually has to come from a side hustle or having your own full-blown business. You will still be working though, you'll just be working for yourself. And this is why I say self-directed income and not passive income. Don't worry about passive income right now. Make enough money to reach level one financial freedom where even though you're still working, you have time and location freedom. And then from there, you can grow to level two and remove yourself from the work and start to make it more passive. And just so you know, level three is generational wealth. And while you might be able to find a job that gives you time and location freedom, you're never gonna find a job that gives you generational wealth. Why? Because jobs compensate you with cash. And no matter how much cash you pass on to the next generation, there's gonna be two problems that you run into. First, cash in the future is always worth less than it is today. The value of cash is decreasing because of inflation. Second, even if your future generations have a ton of cash, they'll still need to figure out how to make more. If they can't, that cash will eventually run out. Instead, you want to pass down assets. Paris Hilton, for example, was born with generational wealth because her family owns the Hilton hotel chain started by Conrad Hilton in 1919. That is a huge asset that's worth nearly 14 billion dollars. There's nothing that Paris Hilton has to do to ensure the Hilton hotels keep making money. That is generational wealth. And no job is just going to pass down assets to your future children and grandchildren. So at some point, owning assets is what you have to do to reach level three of the game. So now that you know how the game works, let's zoom in and figure out how to beat level one. 
First, you need to choose a money tree to plant. You've probably heard the phrase that money doesn't grow on trees, but that is exactly what you're gonna learn to do. And you're gonna choose the specific type of money tree that you're gonna plant and tend to and water so that you can grow yourself an asset that generates cash. I got this concept from one of my favorite business books called The Millionaire Fast Lane. And in it, it lays out the five types of money trees. The first is a rental system where the key to success is ownership. You just have to own something that people want access to and then you can rent it out. The most popular type of rental money tree is going to be owning rental properties. But it's not the only one. There are cheaper and easier things that you could gain ownership of and then rent out. Some people rent out their cars on Turo. Some people have an extra room in their house that they put on Airbnb. There are a lot of small businesses in my area that own a couple of dumpsters that they rent out to construction sites. So if you think you wanna go the route of a money tree, think about what things do you own that you could rent out to people who need them. The second money tree is a software system. And the key to success here is having the skill set to code and build software. And unfortunately, that's not one that I have. But if this is a skill that you have, you could build a really successful money tree. If you guys can't tell from all my recent content, I am obsessed with pickleball. And whenever I travel, I find a place to play. And every single gym that I go to uses the same app. It's called Court Reserve and you log in, you sign a waiver for that place, and then it tells you how many courts there are, what skill levels there are. And I love that as a pickleball player, but as an entrepreneur, I'm even more impressed because whoever built that app, whoever had the vision to see that that was a need, but also the skill set to develop the software has now built a software money tree that is being used all around the country. The next money tree is a content system. And the key to success here is the ability to get attention. There's a new term that a lot of people are using called a creatorpreneur. And so it's a content creator, but they're not focused on going viral or necessarily like being an influencer. Instead, they're using content like TikTok, YouTube, or even written content to help grow their business. And that's exactly how I approach things with my content business. I actually think of each video or each piece of content that I put out as like a small piece of digital real estate or a small digital rental property because there's multiple streams of income set up on each of the videos, right? Someone might decide to click through and buy one of my paid programs. If there's an ad on the video, then I'll get AdSense. If there's a link in the description that has an affiliate link, then that's another small income stream attached to each one of the videos. And the better content you make and the more of it that you put out there, the bigger your content money tree will grow. Fourth, you've got a distribution money system. And the key to success here is systems that can distribute physical goods. So think about having an Amazon store or doing drop shipping. This is one of those side hustles that was really popular on YouTube pre-COVID. I never actually ended up trying it, so I can't give you any advice from a personal standpoint, but there are a lot of creators on YouTube documenting their journey if you feel like a distribution money tree is right for you. But by far, the most popular money tree is a human resource money tree, which yes, sounds kind of boring, but the key to success here is the ability to deliver services. One of the great things about this money tree is you can start it very, very cheaply, sometimes completely for free. And even if you are the person delivering the services, eventually you can delegate the delivery and that's how you become passive. So some examples of a human resource money tree is like my YouTube agency, where I'm finding people who need the service of growing and monetizing their YouTube channels. And I'm using the resources that I have in terms of YouTube strategists, video editors, and thumbnail designers in order to deliver that service. So if you can think of any service that someone would be willing to pay for and that you believe you could figure out how to solve that problem, then you can build a human resource money tree. One example that I came across recently is a trash can cleaning business. I was leaving my house one day and I saw a truck that was picking trash cans up, but the cans were empty and it wasn't a garbage truck. And on the back of the truck, there was a guy with a pressure washer hose. And as the truck picked up the trash can, he sprayed it out with soapy water. It flipped the trash can, shook it and dry it and put it back down. That is a very simple business model. People don't want stinky trash cans sitting outside of their house all week. And so many of them are willing to pay this service to come clean them up. Any and all of these five money trees can get you from being cash flow positive in a job all the way through to level three of having generational wealth. But there is a fork in a road that you'll need to follow from this point. If you're not sure which money tree is right for you based on your skill set, how much money and time you have available, then you need to watch this video right here, which compares 10 examples of popular businesses and side hustles that you can choose from. And if you know what your money tree and your business is going to be, then you need to figure out exactly how to price it so that you can reach $10,000 dollars per month consistently without working yourself to the bone. And it's the biggest mistake that I see new entrepreneurs make. So if you know what business you're going to get into and you want to make sure that you're pricing it correctly, you're going to watch this video next.